Hi there, it's Tracy Kiernan from StepbyStepPainting.net and this tutorial will show you how to paint a beach gnome on an 11 by 14 inch canvas. I believe this is the fifth gnome in the gnome series that I've done, so I've done one for pretty much every season now. And we are going to go ahead and get started. By the way, the link to this tutorial is in the website if you're watching this video from YouTube. So you can go on the website and see picture directions. And also I have a link to my other gnome tutorials as well. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna paint the ocean background of this painting. So the entire background is a very simple ocean scene. And the ocean scene is a sky with the, the ocean water and the sand. So I am gonna start at the top of my painting and do the sky first. And I have two colors on my palette. I have cerulean blue and titanium white. I'm also using a three quarter inch flat wash brush and I have a cup of water. So I'm gonna double load my three quarter flat brush in both the blue and the white. And by the way, the horizon line of this painting is about six inches down the canvas, a little bit higher than the middle. So if you wanna make a mark with a ruler or I just marked with a little water line um, so I knew how far down I'm gonna go with the sky. If you wanted to be super formal about it, you can get a piece of painter's tape and line that painter's tape up with your horizon line. But um, like I said, this is a super simple background because we're gonna focus more on our gnome than anything else. And so I'm just gonna do the blue and the white together and I'm just gonna paint all the way down to that mark down there. And letting that blue and the white kind of blend together, I like to leave it unblended so the two colors don't blend all the way. So you have different variations of the blue. Some areas are lighter, some are a little bit darker depending on how the blue and the white mix together. If you don't like that look, you can uh, mix your blue and white all the way together and just do a solid color. You can keep it simple. Um, but we want this horizon line to be somewhat horizontal. So what I like to do is I take my T-square ruler and line it up to the side of the canvas. And I just use that straight edge to make sure that my horizon line is going to go nice and horizontal. Um, you can also do that with a piece of painter's tape. You can draw a horizontal line or you can estimate it. Um, it's up to you how you want to make that horizontal line. But I'm just filling up the rest of this sky, making sure all my canvas is covered. Occasionally I dip my brush in a little bit of water. It kind of helps with the flow of the two colors and it's a really very thin layer of paint. You don't want to slap it on too thick in this area. So there's our sky, super simple. And we're gonna move on to the water part. So this is bright aqua green for the water. And if you need to freshen up your titanium white, go ahead and do that. It's okay if our cerulean blue mixes with the um, ocean color. But I'm gonna just take a towel here, wipe off my brush, and I'm gonna go ahead and do our ocean. So our ocean goes almost all the way down the canvas. Part The bottom part kind of curves a little bit into a sandy area, but we won't worry about that just yet. So I'm double loading my brush in the aqua and the white. And the same thing what I did with the sky with um, having the colors kind of blend together on the canvas. It's, it's, it, that's the exact same thing I'm doing here. So with the oceans, I like to have my turquoise kind of vary with the white. Um, Further in the distance, it's a little bit lighter, so I'm actually gonna use the tip of my brush to really get to that, that horizontal line up there to make sure that's all covered. And then I'm gonna work my way down the canvas with this turquoise and white. Um, you're not going to paint all the way to the bottom. You're going to stop at about the three, in, three to four inches from the bottom of the canvas. And actually you're gonna end up having to curve that area and I will demonstrate that for you in just a bit. So if you use the um, tip of your brush to draw a curve, just like that, um, we're about five inches from the top of the canvas where that top part of the curve goes. It just kind of, curves down then it curves back up. So that's gonna be your shoreline. So everything above that line is going to be that turquoise and white combination. So super simple. 
um, we're not making our ocean look super realistic. We're not going to do really realistic looking waves unless you wanted to do that. Um, like I said, the focus of this is really the gnome piece. And this is just all the background. And I'm filling this up. Um, you can leave it unblended or you can keep painting to where it all blends to the same color. It's up to you. So what we're going to do next is our sand. And I used two colors for the sand unbleached titanium and burnt umber. So the unbleached titanium is that light sand color. The reason I grabbed this brown is because I wanted to darken that sand a little bit. If you're simplifying this painting, you don't have to use that dark brown. You can just not use it and use just the sand color. But what I'm gonna do is paint everything below that curved line um, with those two colors. So same exact concept, the brown and the unbleached titanium blend together. Um, this time we're kind of going in a curved direction, but after we get past that curved direction, our strokes are really mostly going left and right. Um, you just wanna be careful with this dark brown because it'll spread super fast. And if you don't want your sand to be terribly dark, you don't wanna use a lot of brown in there. So use mostly that sand color. But uh, again, some variations of color in there with that darker brown kind of streaking with the unbleached titanium. I'm working on a stretched canvas and I'm not doing this, but if you wanted to, you can take the color that paint that you're using and paint it on the side of your canvas so you can extend the color if you want. Um, so we're done with this piece. Uh, we still need to do a simple wave. So where our turquoise meets the sand, we're gonna get a little bit of white and go over that area. So I rinsed my brush off and dried it. Really important to get all that off. Grab some of your white on the tip of the brush and we're gonna paint white over the, that line, so where that turquoise and sand meet. So I'm gonna start out with kind of textured strokes here and uh, eventually kind of transition to not textured strokes. But I'm just getting that white to overlap the blue and the brown to make it look like we have a little bit of sea foam in that area. Nothing too fancy or complicated. So I'm just kind of doing textured rounded strokes here in this area. And then if your um, white is see-through, so I'm just gonna take it over and just kind of brush over it um, to make it somewhat see-through where that sea foam would be covering the sand and the blue part of the ocean and do a little bit more textured strokes in there. And I'm adding more of that white overlapping that sandy area. So if you just kind of tap your brush, it gives it a little bit of a wave texture in there. And then I wanna go back in, and of course my white kind of mixed with that sand color. I didn't want too much sand color up in the ocean. But I wiped my brush off, grabbed some white, and I'm just using the very, very tip of my brush to do horizontal strokes in the ocean area. Um, just kind of all throughout gives it um, some water texture lines, maybe the lights hit in the water there, or it's showing little subtle waves off in the distance. But that is it for our simple ocean background scene. This, uh, actually, no, it's not it. We're going to add a sun and some clouds. So not as simple, but um, this, this step is simple. But we are, we're going to do the sun next. And so for this sun, I used primary yellow and white, and I'm just gonna use my finger to paint this sun. And um, so I just dipped my finger in the yellow and the white, so I press on it, and so it's super bright in the middle, and you just kind of release the pressure as you're forming your circle outwards, and it blurs it out just like that. And if you wanted the center to be a little bit more brighter, you can add a teeny bit more white on your finger, and then you release the pressure of your finger and you just kind of um, spiral it out a little bit. So that's a one way you can do the sun. If you don't wanna use your finger to paint the sun, you can just use a round brush and do that. Um, for the clouds, basic, basic clouds. I know clouds can be kind of tricky, um, but I'm gonna do very, very basic clouds here. So this is a number 12 or a number four bright brush. You can use any small flat brush for this technique. 
and dip it, the tip of the brush in the white and form the cloud shape. So I'm doing little rounded strokes to form the fluffy top part of the cloud. And then the bottom of the cloud is some pretty, for the most part, flat. And the clouds that are up higher in the sky, a little bit larger, the clouds towards the bottom, smaller and flatter. And that's just it, very simple. Um, not a lot of paint on the brush to create the clouds. So basically, now we're done with our background. And this entire thing has to dry before we can move on to the next step. So mine is dry here. And the next step is going to be drawing our gnome. I will be showing you how to draw the gnome. If you would like to print off the traceable, there is a traceable for this. So you can print that off and use transfer paper for it so you don't have to draw the gnome. So it's up to you what you prefer doing. And when I draw all these gnomes, I like to start with the nose. So our nose is it's starting in the center of the ocean. So I'm doing like a an oval shape for the nose. And then I drew the hat. So our hat is hugging the top part of the nose, so that bottom part of the hat. And then we're gonna go ahead and finish the rest of our hat. So we have that bottom piece in place. I'm just gonna lightly sketch the, the rest of the hat so it goes upwards and it starts to go in um, because it's a triangular shape hat, but it's a little bit wavy. So I'm gonna do wavy lines on both sides and I'm going to have it curve outwards towards the right and dip down so it's gonna fold in this area right here. Go down to a point, so you can see that it has the fold, it goes down to the point. And this little gnome has a starfish hanging from his hat, it's a little line. And then you can draw a simple star hanging from the tip of his hat. So draw this lightly. I know it's kind of hard to see this on video because I'm not pressing as hard, but we're going to do the beard next. So the beard is as wide as the hat. So two kind of curved lines on both sides and do some textured lines on both sides. And eventually this is going to go down to a point on the bottom. So it's going to go down to a point just like that. And I know there's a beach ball and there's hands, but don't worry about that yet. So we have our beard in place and we can kind of adjust everything else as we go along here. Um, so our hands, these are gonna curve outwards a little bit. So two curved lines on both sides. And then you'll do the sleeves under it. So the sleeves, the bottom sleeves kind of go up diagonally on both sides. And then I'm going to do the beach ball before I do the hand. So our beach ball is a circle. You're just going to draw kind of a large circle. And the, of course, that's going to overlap our beard. And we can always erase what we overlap. And then we can do our hands. So the hands are simple um, mitten hands. So the big curve and the little curve for the thumb. The thumbs are facing up. And then we can kind of go back over our circle. If you want to, you can erase the, what your circle overlapped, or you don't have to erase because we'll be painting over all of our drawing anyway. And then we have our bottom piece. So our little gnome guy's in shorts this time. So I'm gonna um, kind of lightly sketch the shorts, whatever would be showing behind the beard at that point. And our feet of the gnomes, and the gnome is wearing blue sandals. You can look at the finished version. Um, but these curved little feet shape for the sandals. And then you can draw a little strap on the foot and a little piece on the bottom of the foot for his sandal. And I'm just kind of going back over some of that drawing to make it a little bit darker. But there's our basic drawing. And I always say this when I do the drawings on the paintings, we can adjust this when we paint it in. We don't have to paint in the lines. We can paint outside the lines. The drawing is just a guideline to kind of help us on our way here when we do the painting. So we are gonna move right along here and start painting our gnome in. 
starting with the nose. So the nose is the unbleached titanium color, with a little bit of brown just to darken that color up a bit. I'm using a number four round brush, and in fact, I will be using this number four round brush for the entire part of the gnome, so I won't be switching brushes. Um, if your four round is uh, too big, you can always switch to a smaller brush depending on the size of the object you're filling in. Um, but I'm just painting his nose in right now. And I'll rinse that off. And then I'll be doing the beard next. So the beard is a titanium white and Mars black. So I'm gonna load my palette with those two colors. You only need a tiny, tiny bit of Mars Black for this because that Mars Black is gonna make our white be a little bit more gray in the beard and you don't need a lot of that black. I'm gonna start by loading my brush with the white and I'm gonna paint these textured strokes to kind of contour and form the shape of the beard. Occasionally, I'll grab a little bit of black on the tip of my brush. I'll outline around that nose and kind of go with the flow of the beard. So just little textured strokes. Um, we do have that volleyball in the way, or not, yeah, the little beach ball in the way. And what you can do is you can paint completely over it, which would be fine, or you can paint around it. It might be kind of tricky to paint around it, especially doing all these textured strokes. So um, I'm gonna kind of paint around it, leave a blank spot in there, but it's not gonna be a circle spot. It's just gonna be a blob that's open. That's so I can just definitely get the rest of that beard in that's showing through the, bar, the ball. So um, make sure you do the bottom part of the beard that would be showing underneath the ball and um, textured strokes kind of on the side and on the bottom. When that dries, we can always go back over the beard with more layers. So uh, right now I'm just gonna let that be as it is and I'm gonna move on. Our hat, I did the hat, um, the Seraline Blue color. Um, there's not a lot of contrast with this with the background. I uh, kind of wish I would have picked a like a warm color and that would really get this gnome to pop, but it is what it is. Um, you you can customize the colors if you want, but this is the Seraline Blue color that I'm using, and I started at the bottom of the hat, and I did the bottom triangular piece, and I'm just gonna go ahead and load my brush in a little bit of white, and so what I'm doing is I'm outlining our hat that we drew so that I know uh, what I need to go in and fill in. And also so you can see the hat drawing and um, you can see what I'm doing here. But it's kind of nice when you're filling the shape um, in to outline the outer part first and then you can go ahead and fill it in. And our gnome has stripes for his hat so it's an alternating white and the light blue color. So I'm doing the white stripe here. And our stripes are going curved because of the way the hat is shaped. So they're not um, going perfectly straight across, they're curved. Um, so when I alternate these stripes, I'm not rinsing my brush off in between colors. And I kind of like how that looks, um, how a little bit of that blue mixes with that white and then vice versa. Um, but Eventually my brush is going to get way overloaded. So I'm going to I have a rag in my left or yeah I have my rag to the left here that I'm using to wipe off the paint in between colors And so I'm just alternating my colors Here um, so blue white blue white with the stripes going up the hat kind of curved It'll get a little tricky when we get to the part the hat that folds down But we'll kind of figure it out as we go along wipe the brush, grab the blue, and do our blue striped. Again, um, you most certainly can use these colors, but um, there's not a whole lot of contrast here, especially since they're the same two colors we used in the sky. So it is being applied thicker and darker than the sky. So there is contrast, just not a whole lot. Um, definitely, if you wanted to switch the colors out and be super creative with this, you are more than likely to, more than welcome to do that. So my stripes are gonna get kind of smaller down the hat and wipe my brush off, grab our blue, and do the blue stripes in there as well. It 
And then for this fold part, I'm just going back over that line to kind of emphasize that so that blue line is created on that fold part so we can see that our hat is folded down and just going to go in over some of these. I'll add a little bit of highlighting to this hat later, but for now it needs to dry before we do anything else to it. I'm going to go ahead and touch his nose up, add a second coat of paint to his nose. And especially since we might have um, painted over the nose a little bit when we did the hat and the beard. So I'm just taking the unbleached titanium, painting that, grab a teeny bit of the brown and a little bit of brown on the bottom. Maybe do a little bit of shadowing on the bottom and blend it. You don't have to do that if you don't want to. Maybe a little bit advanced if you don't want to do that. Just kind of blending that brown back up. Um, before we can do this beach ball shape, we want to make sure that our beard is for the most part dry. And if it is, you can take your round brush and your titanium white and do your circle. So paint your circle shape in that area. Rounded strokes to form a circle. This circle is probably about two and a half to three inches in diameter if you wanted to measure that, but it doesn't have to be exact. This is a really large circle, which I think is kind of adorable that the gnome is holding a big beach ball with his cute little hands. A um, few strokes of the white in the beard um, just to add to that texture and there was still white on my brush, so I utilized it there. Um, I'm going to paint the sleeves next. So the sleeves are that uh, saline blue color and I'm doing that um, the sleeve shape that I drew so it curves and then we have a diagonal line. Same thing on this side. So curve, diagonal line. Our gnome kind of looks like a wizard with these colors. And the shorts that he's wearing, same thing. So I'm gonna do the curve and the, the line for his shorts. And fill it in solid. Um, if you need to go over the beard a little bit, you can, and um, when the blue dries, you can just go back over and touch up the beard that is supposed to be overlapping that area where his shorts are. And I'm going to rinse and I'm going to go back to our unbleached titanium brown color to do his hands and feet next. So the unbleached titanium, grab a little brown. Um, I'm going to do his feet here. So don't worry about his sandals yet. Just do um, his foot shape. I know in the other tutorials there, he's wearing boots. This time his feet are uncovered and he's got sandals. going to rinse our brush and put a second coat of white over our beach ball so that it's nice and bright and kind of touch it up make it a tiny bit larger kind of make sure that circle is very circular <laughs> and we'll be putting the stripes on this after that white is dry but I want to make sure that that is a solid coat of white it's covering everything else that it is overlapping. And then I can grab the unbleached titanium and I'll go ahead and do the hands here. So you can actually wait until you're done with the stripes to do the hands. I don't know why I did it in this order, but I was anxious and wanted to see his hands. So I did, they're the mitten hands, so um, the simplified big curve, little curve for the thumb. The thumbs are facing up. So just kind of do it with your unbleached titanium color, the big curve little curve and then we have stripes on our gnome attire 
you want to do this, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. They're just little stripes, little white, a um, little bit of white on the tip of the brush. And I did stripes on the shorts as well. Again, feel free to be creative and change patterns and colors and have lots of fun with these gnome tutorials. Going back in and touching up the stripes, kind of making them brighter with a second coat of white. Stand out a little bit better. A little bit of highlighting over on the left side. So just barely, barely using the, the tip of the brush to bar barely brush the canvas. Um, just on the left side, I'm doing little white marks for highlights. And then I want to go ahead and paint that cute little starfish that's hanging from the tip of his hat. So using the burnt umber color and painting the starfish in. I'm going to go ahead and do our sandals next. So rinse that number four brush off, wipe, and grab your blue again. So we're going to take this and do the bottom part. So it overlaps the foot a little bit, but it also goes in the sand area. And then the strap of his sandal, I'm going to freshen up this blue color here. Um, the sandal strap is just going to go from the bottom piece, going to curve upwards and go over our foot. Rinse and dry my brush and I'm going to touch up the beard next, especially if there's parts where our shorts were overlapping the beard on the edges. So I'm going to grab my white teeny tiny bits of the gray go back over in this area and do the texture on the side so same kind of textured strokes and then i'll go ahead and add that all throughout our beard i'm gonna make some darker streaks in there with a little bit more black but not too much black so i'm just doing some of that texture on the beard Then I'm going to do a little bit of texture on our cute starfish here. So little tiny white dots on our starfish. And again, I'm going to go ahead and touch up the beard with some more white. You don't have to do all these extra touch-ups if you do not want to. Just adding the white textured strokes in there. I'm going to paint the surfboard next. So that's also the white for the base of the surfboard. You can look up clip art for your surfboards, look at different designs, um, but just do a basic shape. So it's going to start on the sand, it's going to go up, go to a point, and this one's going to go off the canvas here. So that shape is going off to the side a bit and I'm going to paint this surfboard shape in with a solid coat of titanium white. Next, I'm going to paint our cute little crab. So this is Pyrol Red. And I'll still be using that number four round brush. Rinse it off and dry. If you want, if you think it's helpful to draw the crab first, you can. I'm just going to paint it shape by shape here. So with the red, we're going to start with a simple oval shape. So relatively the same size as the nose of our gnome and paint it in solid red. I'm 
and then two curved lines on each side and a little curved line on top of that for his claws and then there's going to be two more lines and make those claws a little bit thicker there and then two lines in the middle for his eyes and we won't do the white part of the eyes just yet and I'll do three curved lines on each side of our crab for the rest of his legs so there's our basic crab shape and I'll just kind of go over this with the second coat of paint for claws and then so we're gonna do our beach ball next um, so with the beach ball I took that red started with that pyrol red color and did a triangle shape that kind of went curved towards the middle so all these little cur curved triangular shapes are meeting and um, not the center so our center is kind of upwards and more towards the left um, and then here's our second curved triangle shape so you can make a pattern if you want um, I just I didn't really do a pattern I just did red red and then some blues and some yellows but it didn't really make a pattern so that's up to you how you want to do that um, I want to do our circle piece more towards the end there but um, this is primary yellow and I'm going to do some more triangular shapes for that yellow so those are going to curve and fill in solid so again each of these are meeting to um, what's going to be that circle piece um, but that circle piece is not exactly in the center it's kind of more upwards I'm going to rinse and dry and get Mars black so uh, I'm going to do the circle part that little center part of our beach ball where all the little triangular curved pieces are meeting that's gonna be a black circle and I'll adjust that red piece that didn't go all the way here in just a second So I have a towel on the left side of this and you don't see it on the camera. That's where my brush was moving to the left after I dry. I make sure I wipe that brush with the towel so that when I load the paint, it's not gonna be all drippy and go all over the place. But it's kind of hard when you're doing detailed work. You don't want a lot of water on the brush, but um, sometimes it is helpful to mix a little water into your paint to get it to flow better. But if your brush is watery, uh, that's not going to help with detailed work either. So you got to make sure you dry your brush between all your rinses. And there's a lot of rinses in this painting because we're jumping back and forth to different colors here. And I'm just touching up the white on this piece. Try not to let my colors run into it. And then I decided to add some blue to my stripes on my ball and I'm just grabbing that blue color and going over some of my white pieces just to add some more color on there some more contrast uh, too much white against that beard that ball didn't really stand out so I grabbed some blue to put in there I'll leave one piece white just for fun so I didn't really do a pattern if like I said if you wanted to do a pattern you can do that instead and then I'm gonna go ahead and touch up his hand add it a little bit more brown in there for his hand just so that can stand out a bit better and then go back over that again 
Do the same thing for the feet. You don't have to do this if your feet are standing out just fine against the sand color, that's okay. And then rinse, dry, and go on to the next detail. Um, so for the crab eyes, I used titanium white and I did two circles on the top of his, um, the, on those two red lines that I made. And then you can wait for that to dry before doing the black. Um, and then I did a little seashell. So just a basic seashell shape. Um, do the little um, wiggly lines on the bottom. And then do the bumps for the top piece and fill it in solid white. And when that dries, I'll go back over with a lighter red color and um, kind of outline it some more. And then if your white piece is dry, you can do the two dots and then um, with the Mars black and you can do a face or a smiley face on the crab. And then I did some more texture lines on the beard. And uh, so what I'm doing here is I'm loosely outlining some of the gnome with the black very, very small amount of black on the tip of my brush. And I'm doing this very loosely, so I'm holding that brush very gently, just barely tapping the canvas with that black. So I'm picking some areas to outline, and that's gonna give your gnome a little boost of contrast um, to kind of make it pop and stand out a bit. I would definitely not outline everything because then it'll look too much like a coloring book um, but just a few areas um, where you think they need to kind of stand out a little bit more you can outline so I'm going to grab a little bit of brown on my brush a little bit of unbleached titanium just a darker version of that sand color and I'm just going to do very very subtle lines right under his feet some shadow lines and I did shadow lines under the crab as well. So rinse, dry, and I'm going to move on to our surfboard. So if that white coat of paint is done for your surfboard, you go ahead and paint it in. Um, this is just how I'm doing it. I did a light gray color on the left side of it. So I mixed a whole bunch of white with just a teeny bit of black and I divided that surfboard in half and I did light gray on the left side and left the white, the right side white. Um, but like I said, you can look up some surfboard clip art designs and you can design your own surfboard and kind of get creative with this if you would like. Um, and then I'm taking this, uh, that blue color, that Saraline blue, and I'm going to make a border around the edge of the surfboard. So kind of a thick line going on the outer edge of it. Then I took a little bit of titanium white and added some white, a little bit of highlighting over on the left edge of the, the surfboard, or just on the blue part. Again, very subtle detail. Add a little bit more white on there and I will rinse off. So I'm going to grab that brush that I used for the clouds earlier, that flat brush and the color bright aqua green. And I'm going to do kind of a chevron look on the surfboard. So these are going at an angle. So I'm just going to use that flat brush to paint that angle here. And this one's going to go down at an angle. And I'll do three angles. So just a simplified surfboard design. Um, then I took the unbleached titanium color and I'm going to do this sand texture. So our surfboard is resting in the sand and I did some bumpy lines kind of overlapping the bottom part of it and I added some more sand color all throughout and a little bit more touch-ups on the surfboard there. 
So the shell here, I'm going to outline our shell. I just mixed some, a whole bunch of white, a little bit of unbleached titanium, and a little bit of pyrrole red in there to kind of make a light um, pink color. And I'm using the tip of my brush to outline the lines on this seashell to kind of make that stand out a little bit better. So really the rest of this painting is just going to be me doing touch-ups here. So I'm adding some touch-ups to the beach ball with that blue, um, kind of a second coats wherever there needs to be a second coat of paint. Um, grabbing some white, doing some water lines on there. Um, with the round brush and the white, so just some very, very thin water lines all throughout the water. I know earlier we did that with the flat brush, but this time using it with the round brush kind of gives it a different look. And doing some touch-ups wherever there is to be needed. But for the most part, this um, painting tutorial is coming to its conclusion. I did a little bit of black outlining on the surfboard there. And I hope that you enjoy painting our the, a beach gnome. I mean, again, this is the fifth gnome in a series of different gnomes that I've painted. So you can go ahead, sign your name, show it off. Thanks for painting with me and thanks for watching.